Flynn Dog Science with me, Caleb Flynn. Subscribe, like, comment, hit that bell. Science lovers, welcome to Flim Dog Science. I'm Caleb Fleming, and first off, I have fantastic news for you. He's okay, right? You're good? Eyes just a little wandering, but uh, he's good. Today we're gonna look at three things. My self-restraint to only do three is unbelievable. You have no idea how much I wanna look at like 20 other things, but three things today. First, we're gonna see, did a reaction occur? And if it did, what's the evidence? Second, what type of reaction do you think this was of our five general types of reactions? Third, how do we account for the change in mass as the steel wool burned? Let's begin. Did a reaction occur? Let me do a really simple version of what we did that's gonna go really fast. You saw that. So did a reaction occur? Here's your normal evidences of reaction. You might get some bubbles in a solution. You might see a color change in the solution. You might see a precipitate form. You might feel it get cold or feel it get hot. If there's any other evidences I forgot, let me know in those comments. When you watch that, did any of those things occur? Did you see the color change? You saw it, right? I saw it too. Did you see the heat being released? I could feel it. It was, it was radiating off there. The wire actually heats up to about 700 degrees Celsius is what I read. That's why it's glowing hot. Third, we had a change in mass. And that is evidence that we might have a precipitate forming, but it's not in solution, it's on the wire. Did a reaction occur? You tell me, what was our evidence? Second, what type of reaction occurred? Let me tell you a quick story that goes through our five types of reactions. You're in lab class where you've always wanted to be or always get back to, and sitting across from you is your dream person. Your eyes connect over a flaming green cloud of fire that's going from this reaction, and you realize this is my person you combine in a synthesis reaction. You have your special person, but because it's high school, it's a highly unstable relationship and you decompose into two independent scientists once again. And what was a primary reason that you decomposed into two independent scientists once again? It's because your lab partner connected eyes with another person sitting at your bench. And not only did you decompose, you were replaced. So your lab partner joins someone else in single replacement reaction. But all is not lost because you go out to ice cream and you take your date and your best friend takes their date. But as you're sitting at that table, the eyes cross of opposite buddies and you have double replacement reaction go on and the flames of true love in combustion take place. So what type of reaction did we see go on? We saw fire, flames, that's combustion. We also saw potentially one other thing that we'll try to get to by the end. So third thing we wanna check out, how do we explain the change in the mass? First off, let's think about what's going on with combustion. If you've missed our combustion videos, I'm gonna put a few links down in the description. I've got like, I don't know, four or five, six, something like that, combustion videos, including a fun little handwritten tutorial about isopropyl. And to help us understand the mass when we burn steel wool, let's look at what happens to the mass when we light isopropyl alcohol on fire. 1.67 grams here. Can you see what's happening to the mass? There might be a little reflection the mass is immediately going down, immediately. So the isopropyl alcohol is a carbon chain with an alcohol group, an OH attached to it. And as the alcohol bumps into the oxygen in the air, the alcohol, the carbon, the oxygen, and the hydrogen in that collision are all rearranging. So the alcohol right now is pushing down on the scale, giving us our mass reading. As the alcohol reacts with the oxygen, CO2 is leaving. 
H2O gas is leaving. So the carbon and oxygen are leaving as a gas that's not pushing on the scale. The hydrogen and oxygen are leaving as a gas that's not pushing down on the scale. So the mass pushing down on the scale is slowly decreasing until we're left with essentially nothing. So that's what's going on with alcohol. The mass decreases of the thing that's burning, not because the atoms are lost, but because they're rearranged into a gas that goes into the air. How is that different than steel wool? Well, when you burn steel wool, what did we see happen to the mass? Let's burn a little more, just because it's incredibly cool. So right now I have 2.81 grams of steel wool. Let's see what happens to the mass when we burn it. We'll pay special attention to that. Okay, at first the mass decreases, which is interesting, we can talk about why, but now the mass is going up. Why is the mass going up? Steel wool is made of iron. And as the iron reacts with the oxygen in the air, instead of becoming a gas that leaves, it grabs the oxygen and sticks to it. So the iron is not the only thing pushing down on the scale. Now it's the iron and the oxygen that's stuck to the iron, making a iron oxide compound that is now more massive. So the scale is going to register it as more mass. And so the mass here is increasing. So cool. Color change, heat, getting more mass. So many questions. I have so many questions. So imagine this is our little guy from the beginning. Okay, 19.1. We touch him with the battery. Boop. And what starts happening? It starts reacting with the oxygen in the air. The oxygen in the air starts sticking to him. We're no longer at 19, now we're at 21. My little guy's getting more and more massive as these oxygens in the air start sticking to him. So the oxygen reacts with the iron in the steel wool, sticks to it, making this iron oxide compound. And the iron oxide compound is more massive than your initial iron compound that you started with at the beginning. And it's pretty much pure iron with a little carbon in it. So our iron oxide at the end, little more mass than the iron that we started with. Super cool reaction. Now let's think about what was happening when this guy was combusting. Does that make sense now when you watch that? How the oxygen reacting with the iron to make that iron oxide, which is now more massive and thus there's more mass, it's weighing more as time goes on. So fun questions for you. I have so many questions, so many. What happens if you light this in an oxygen rich environment? What happens if it's a CO2 rich environment? We could do that with like, dry ice? What happens if you light it when it's wet or if it's underwater or if it's in a jar with water surrounding it or in a jar filled with oxygen or a jar filled with CO2? What happens if you try to light it with just regular match or a lighter? What happens to the electrons that allow this to take place? Where's the energy coming from that allows it to burn? Can we get the iron back from the iron oxide that forms? Is the whole wire turning into iron oxide or is it just the periphery? There's so many things that I'm curious about, but we're gonna stop right now, self-control. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing so you don't miss out and we will do this again really soon. I can't wait, have a great day.